Hello everyone, this is Pixie, and today I'm going to show you over 13 new games currently in development for Sega's classic 16-bit console, the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis depending on where you are in the world. I know that many people watching this will be surprised that a console that is now over 35 years old is still getting new games released for it. Not only is that true, but the Mega Drive development scene is getting more and more active with each passing year. If you're at all curious about how modern Mega Drive games are made and how it compares to how they were made back in the 80s and 90s in terms of uh, tools and so on, then you can watch this video which I will link here. And if after watching this video you feel inspired to maybe get involved in the scene yourself as a new hobby for 2024, whether that be as a graphical artist or as a programmer or as a um, musician, then I've already created this tutorial series here which goes into detail how to do things such as uh, parallax scrolling, how to create sprites, how to animate sprites, how to create backgrounds that are suitable for the Mega Drive and so on. I am a hobbyist developer myself and my current project is creating this uh, Mega Drive version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And if you're interested in that I have plenty of uh, videos on my channel already where I go deep into the development process and how it was made. Today however I want to cover other people's games for the system and not all the people creating games for the console are amateurs like me, we actually have some real professionals making games. The developer of the first game I'm going to feature here is not only a professional but an actual legend of the 90s gaming scene. His company Ancient is currently making a shoot 'em up for the console called Earthium. Now even if you don't recognise the company name Ancient, you probably will recognise the name Yuzo Koshiro. His company was responsible for classics such as Streets of Rage 2 and Legends of Oasis as well as developing the 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog. It's really exciting to see what these old school developers can do when using modern development tools. Another factor which no doubt held them back back in the day were the cartridge sizes because at the time the cartridges were very expensive and they had to really beg and plead the publisher for any increase in cartridge size. Sometimes even a 16 megabit cartridge would have been a, a huge victory for them. These days having a full 32 megabit cartridge or even bigger using bank switching is no problem at all so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they achieve with this game. I understand that this is due to release sometime in the summer of 2024 so I will include a link to Yuzo Koshiro's social media accounts just so you can keep an eye on the project. In fact I will include links for every single game featured in this video in the video description so please go to there for more information. One of the most exciting things about owning any console has always been to watch the developers gradually manage to squeeze more and more out of the hardware as they become more familiar with it. Being such an old system that is especially true for Sega's 16-bit console. Anyone who's been following the developer Shannon Burt over the past few months would have noticed he'd been doing some real magic with the hardware. Technically speaking, the Mega Drive should only be capable of displaying up to 80 sprites and 61 colours on the screen at the same time. However, in this little tech demo here you can see that Shannon has somehow managed to display 440 sprites and 440 colours on screen at the same time. And the good news is he's not just doing this to show off his blast processing skills either. He and his team are using this knowledge to create their own game. Luft or Hate or King of the Sky. He has been kind enough to send me this exclusive footage of the game in action and with the sprite scaling and colour changes and the sheer number of sprites on screen at the same time, it's fair to say it's looking pretty incredible. And as with all the games featured today, you will find links for more information in the video description. There will be more shoot 'em up games to come later on in the video, but for now let's have a change of pace with a few different genres. The next game I want to show is this Snatcher-esque adventure game by Matt B. As you can see, the gameplay and the graphics both take a lot of inspiration from Konami's classic Mega CD title. While Sega's CD system did get a couple of these type of games, the base console was unfortunately not well served in this type of genre, so it's really good to see more adventure type games coming out. 
it will be interesting to see what the plot for this one's going to be like because of course the story is very important for adventure type games i'm not sure if you're going to be fighting uh, robots dressed as humans or it's going to be something entirely different but definitely one i'm looking forward to Next up we have this new action platformer game called Damon Claw. This one seems to have started out production on the Commodore Amiga computer and is also being ported to the Neo Geo as well as the Mega Drive. It had a very successful Kickstarter raising almost 150,000 euros and is looking great so far. If you missed that Kickstarter don't worry just check the links in the video description. There's normally a way to pre-order these games or even to buy the cartridges after they've released. Plus like many of the games featured in this video here they're likely to get some kind of modern console or PC release anyway. The porting duties to the Mega Drive is being undertaken by Neofid, the same company who also did um, Demons of Asterberg and Asterberg on the Mega Drive so I think this port is in really good hands and I'm sure it'd be fantastic. With so many different versions in development it can be sometimes difficult to tell which one's the Mega Drive port and which one's the Neo Geo and Amiga one but you can see it here being played on the Mega Drive itself. Although a side-scrolling platformer, the last game did have almost some beat-em-up elements, the way you attack the enemies and the way they attacked you and so on, but now we have a genuine side-scrolling beat-em-up called Carito. The gentlemen you're seeing on screen right now are presumably the creators of the game, and as you can see, it's, it's a game that, although early in development, already has a lot of personality to it. Not much is known about this game here except this footage that the creators posted on their X account. What really catches the eye with this one is the amount of zooming and scaling going on while still maintaining a healthy frame rate. It will certainly be interesting to see more of this one in the future. The next game we're about to cover initially started off as a straightforward Metroid port but it's now evolving into its own thing. It's already got some very nice animation in place and I especially like the little touches like when you, uh, when you land on the ground or when you shoot your gun and the little, um, the little casings come out and it's got some nice uh, mechanics too. Some of them are more kind of Metroid like for example when you go into the Morph Ball and I'm sure they add new abilities later on so this is still very early development but I think it looks very promising. The developers were kind enough to release a Christmas demo for this one so if you follow the links in the video description you'll be able to find that for download and play it on your own console. While we're on the topic of Nintendo properties, we may as well cover this port too, Star Fox. The talented developer of this one, Gesaga68k, apart from this, has also in the past developed little demos of F-Zero playing on a Mega Drive as well as kind of like a Mario Kart game too. And if you're interested, you'll be able to see examples of these running on their YouTube channel, which I'll put in the video description. While it's probably unlikely that this will continue to be developed as a full port, it's still fantastic and very impressive to see this type of game, which at the time was a huge big deal for the Super Nintendo and his Super FX chip. It's amazing to see it running on base Mega Drive hardware without any help from any additional chips.
Back in 2019, the developer Mikel Tillander released the very well regarded game Tanzer. So it's great to see them in the middle of developing this new Mega Drive run and gun game, Heavy Recoil. Game Dev Boss hasn't just been busy with the Space Hunter game, he has also been doing this little port of the Shadow Dancer arcade game for the Mega Drive. Although still very early in development, I'm always very happy to see more Shinobi on the system. In last year's video, I covered Kai Magazine Software's Life on Mars game. During the course of 2023, they not only announced but also finished and released another game called Life on Earth. This one is a futuristic run and gun with a superb soundtrack by Savage Regime. It is already covered extensively by other YouTubers, so if you search on YouTube, you'll find plenty of reviews, and if you're interested, it's available to buy it. Just as I was putting together this video, they announced their new project, The Secret of the Four Winds. They're describing this as an action JRPG, and they say that the combat should be similar to Secret of Mana, but with guns instead of swords. In terms of the setting of the game world and the presentation, I can definitely see some maybe Kojima influences here. These guys tend to get their games released very quickly, and they say they should be able to make an end of 2024 release for this. If you watched last year's video, you may remember a game by the name of Gunslugs by Space Pants Games. I'm happy to report that that was completed and released and is available to buy on cartridge. Not content to rest on his laws, Space Pants Games is also in the process of developing a bunch of other games too. One of them is a Mega Drive conversion of OSAT's games Go Go Pogo Girl. We also have this very interesting looking puzzle game, Cube Droid. And lastly, the spaceship shooter with some very special parallax effects. Mr. Space Pants is actually a developer from the 90s, and this year he also released some details of some commercial projects that he was working on back in the 90s, but never saw the light of day. If you're interested in any of these, as always, I'll include his links in the video description. Next up from Texudo Game Development Studios, we have this what almost looks like the, I don't know if you, any of you remember, the arcade and master system game Choplifter. It looks quite similar to that in terms of the design of the game, only set in kind of an alien world instead of on Earth. Earlier this year, my friend Pyron, who is helping me do the graphics for the Castlevania game, also teamed up with Rio Gamer, and they put together this little, you could call it a tech demo, because they wanted to see just how large of a sprite you can put on the Mega Drive without getting any sprite flicker. And as you can see here, the experiment was very successful. 
In addition to this, Rio Gamer has also been working on a fully fledged port of the SNK fighter, Real Belt Fatal Fury. And considering the hardware differences, I think it looks remarkably similar to the Neo Geo version. <laughs> And if Capcom fighters are more of your thing, then we have this Street Fighter Alpha by Davila Games. Last year I featured a brand new fighting game by Davila Games called Insane Pain and I believe that is now complete and for sale so you can look out for that. And this year it looks like they have turned their attention to this Street Fighter game. While we're looking at fighting games, let's cover this new one. It's by I Heart Peter and it's called Go For It. As far as I can tell, this gentleman has two dreams. One is to open a pizza restaurant. The other one is to create a Mega Drive fighting game. Two very worthy dreams, I'm sure everyone would agree. While I haven't had a chance to taste their pizza yet, I think the fighting game is shaping up very well. Let's take a look at another fan game now and this one is a sequel to the Master System Considing game. The programming for this game has been undertaken by Master Lin Kuei and I understand that this is using something called the Scorpion Engine which I believe is a, a platformer engine which is used for some Amiga games so if this can work on the Mega Drive 2 then it can potentially open up the system to more developers who can develop a platform game more easily than starting from scratch and developing their own engine. You'll no doubt notice a lot of graphical assets from various different Mega Drive games and as a fan of both Shinobi and Considen I'm absolutely fine with that so this is one I'm really looking forward to. Next up is a game called Planet B which the developers Overrated Future describe as a procedural roguelike RPG. Next up we have a returning game from last year or it might have been the year before this first person shooter by the name of Manifold with Eric doing the programming and editing tools and Railsafe doing the art and Tenno Code, the guy, one of the guys who told me to do the music on the Castlevania game doing the music sound effects and also some of the level design. Doing a first person shooter on the Mega Drive isn't easy to say the least and I'm really impressed how they've kept the frame rate relatively smooth as well as having a, a wide variety of different textures in the game too. I know that Eric once had a version of this using both not only the Mega Drive CPU but the Mega CD CPU if that was attached too and of course that gave it a bit of extra oomph, some uh, extra frames. You don't normally see the Mega Drive Mega CD being used in that way so it's super impressive stuff although in this particular footage I'm playing on the Blastom emulator just using the base console.
If you're impressed with that display of 3D power on the 16-bit Mega Drive, then you'll know that like this game too. Hats off to the team for even attempting to do this on the Mega Drive, and it's already looking pretty impressive for the system. Speaking of technically impressive stuff for the system, while not an actual game, I think this tech demo by The Resistance is well worth watching. I will as always include a link in the video description. They also have a ROM to download so you can play it on your own system too and see the amazing feats they're pulling off on the Mega Drive. The next developer, PSCD Games, were featured in last year's video and they seem to have maybe a dozen projects ongoing at the moment, not just for the Mega Drive but also for consoles such as the NES and Super Nintendo too. In 2023 they released Hunter Girls for the Mega Drive. In 2024 they look like they're helping the YouTuber John Riggs create a Mega Drive version of his game Yeah Yeah Beebis 2. One of their most anticipated projects has no doubt been their demake of Resident Evil for the Mega Drive. They have since renamed it BioEvil and want to make it into their own IP with nothing to do with Capcom. It seems like for the past year they don't really focus on trying to get the art for the game and a few months ago they released this really impressive looking animation for the Mega Drive. Their other games, for example the Black Jewel Reborn featured in last year's video is still in development and that one was looking really good so hopefully we'll see more news from that and from the other games soon. The next game, Phantom Gear, was kickstarted back in 2019, but as you know, a lot happened in the world since then, and it has been previously delayed, but it looks like it's due out maybe in February 2024 if all goes well. This looks like being a really high quality platformer, so I think it will be a great addition to the Mega Drive library. This next game, Super Power Kick by Kokomon, looks like being one of those classic one screen arcade games and it has some really funny sound effects and I think this one looks like a lot of fun. This next game by Sasha Darko and published by Mega Cat Studios is almost like a looks like a mist-like graphical novel. It's a sequel to a previous Mega Drive game, so if you like the first one, you'll probably like this one too. This next one really flew under the radar, it's actually a conversion of the classic 1980s arcade game City Connection by Jellico. So the people who have done the, um, the conversion to the Mega Drive are called Habitsoft and this one is already complete and for sale. I'm going to include a link to the YouTuber DWS Games and that's the footage you're seeing now, it's filmed on, on their channel and they go through the game, it's a really good uh, watch so definitely watch that if you're interested in maybe buying the game. Just like a really fun arcade game, but yeah, I think you, this one you'd probably have to import from Japan. The Mega Drive version of R-Type, which I featured in last year's video, Mega R-Type by The Robos, has been coming along very nicely and had a lot of work done to it. The developers very kindly made a demo available, so I'd definitely recommend that you give it a try. Another shooter that was featured in last year's video was ZPF and at the time it looked like we were going to get a Kickstarter campaign soon but it never happened. However we did get a very nice updated demo and it does look like they're very close now. I don't want to say it's going to get a Kickstarter in 2024 but definitely keep your eye on this one because the demo is already really good, the music's fantastic, the uh, graphics are really special too so this is another one we're really looking forward to.
we really are spoiled for choice when it comes to shooters on the Mega Drive and this game, Irena Genesis Metal Fury by White Ninja Studios is also looking fantastic. Okay, so that's just about it in terms of new games being developed for the Mega Drive in 2024. I hope you enjoyed the video. With so much going on in the Mega Drive scene lately, I'm sure I missed one or two, so feel free to add them to the comments if there's anything you should you feel I should have included. With a few notable exceptions, the vast majority of the games mentioned today were developed using SGDK, the Sega Genesis development kit. If you're at all into the Mega Drive homebrew scene and new games, then I highly recommend that you subscribe to Stefan, the creator of SGDK's Patreon, because the more you support that, the more you support all creators. SGDK has already been developed over the past decade, and it's amazing that Stefan's still doing lots of work on it. For example, recently he's been hard at work at a new sound driver, which obviously is very important in terms of music and sound effects, so please support if you can. I will include a link to the Patreon at the top of the video description. Okay, thanks again for watching and if you like this kind of content don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.